Hi, welcome to this quick start video. In this video, I'm going to discuss the new HPE Aruba Networking CX8100 switch. So when we look at the CX switching portfolio, we really do have a rich uh, portfolio that ranges all the way from the access layer and the campus environments, all the way to really demanding data center environments. Um, if we take a look on the far upper right, of course, when we're thinking about the data center, the CX9300 is our 400 gig top of rack or spine switch. Uh, of course, we've got the Aruba CX8400 for a large chassis switch. And then we've got a rich portfolio of CX8360s and 8325s uh, for 25 gig connectivity at the top of rack, as well as the CX10000, which actually has firewall functionality built right into it. But the CX8100 series is our new platform, which really rounds out our data center platforms. This is a 10 gig top of rack switch. So there's still you know, lots of customers out there that don't need, truly need 25 gig connectivity uh, in their data center. And so this 8100 will help us reach those customers at a better price point too. In fact, when we look at the Switch Series, it's really four different models. Um, however, we've made it simple to order, so we've just bundled all these uh, four models into front-to-back or back-to-front airflow options. So depending on the demands of the environment, um, you know, simply order the one SKU and you've got your Switch with the power supplies and fan trays needed for that environment. This uh, platform runs the uh, Aruba OS CX1012 code. Uh, it supports advanced layer two features, static VXLAN, uh, RPVST, as well as layer three features like OSPF, BGP, IPv6. Uh, it's also storage optimized, so it supports lossless networking. Uh, of course, it's a fully redundant switch that you would expect in the data center, so uh, you know, redundant uh, fans and uh, power supplies. Um, and of course, it's fully supported with an AFC as well as central. You know, when we're looking at the use cases for the 8100, really, first and foremost, it's a top of rack data center switch. Um, so we can see this in leaf and spine scenarios uh, at the top of rack, providing that 10 gig connectivity, either via copper or fiber to the uh, servers in that rack. Uh, but it could also be used as a collapsed, uh, a collapsed core. Um, so in this case, in this scenario, you can think of it as supporting, let's say two racks of 24 servers uh, each with uh, two 10 gig uplinks. And really bottom line is this is a, a 10 gig cost effective top of rack switch for, for those environments that still don't need to move to 25 or higher. In fact, you know, kind of just looking at a, at a simple uh, decision tree for this switch, um, when we're looking at the environment is uh, one and 10 gig top of rack, the demand in that environment. So the 80, if that's the case, the 8100 of course should be considered. Um, is it does this environment have limited scale so less than 24,000 routes or less than 1,000 VLANs and if so then of course the 8100 will fit that environment and then of course you know one of the advantages of course is the uh, 8100 really is priced really competitively against the competitors so um, when we take a look at that decision tree you can see uh, that the 8100 will fit a lot of scenarios Bottom line is it's, it's going to provide the lowest TCO, of course, with limited layer three scale. Kind of uh, taking just a little bit closer look at the uh, features and functionalities of this switch. Of course, uh, like I mentioned, layer two, layer three light features, uh, BGP, EVPN with VXLAN, as well as BGP and OSPF. And it is also a storage optimized switch, so it supports lossless networking via the data center bridging protocol suite. Uh, of course, it's fully supported with, within our Aruba Fabric Composer as well as Central. Uh, and again, we can see an example here of the limited scale, so 24,000 routes, 64,000 MAC addresses, 128 IPv4 tunnels, as well as 8,000 ingress ACLs and 1,000 egress ACLs. And of course, like I already mentioned, it comes bundled uh, with the power supplies and fan trays. So customers really just need to purchase that one SKU. Um, but of course, if they did want on-site spares or anything, they could always purchase uh, you know, extra power supplies or fan trays for on-site spares. 
Taking a little bit closer look at the individual switches themselves. So this is the 24 port 10 gig SFP plus model that also has four 40 slash 100 gig uh, uplinks. Uh, supports 640 gigabits of line rate bandwidth, 952 million packets per second. Uh, of course, like I mentioned, it comes fully bundled with the fan, fan trays and power supplies for either back to front or front to back airflow. And uh, very similar, of course, this is the 48 port model, uh, 10 gig SFP plus model that also has four 40 gig or 100 gig uplinks. Uh, this one supports 880 gigabits of line rate bandwidth as well as 1309 million packets per second. Now we're looking at the base T models and you can see this is the uh, CX8124 with 10 gig base T ports. So 24 ports of 10 gig base T, but what's unique on this model is this also does have four 10 gig SFP plus uplinks giving our customers a little bit of flexibility in these types of environments. And then of course it also has four uh, 40 slash 100 gig uplinks. Um, this one supports uh, 680 gigabits of line rate bandwidth at about a thousand million packets per second. Um, it supports the 24 base T ports which are all actually uh, smart rate ports. And of course fully redundant uh, power supplies and fan trays and back to front or front to back options. And then finally, uh, our 40 port uh, base T model. And again, this one's a little unique in that it's 40 ports of 10 gig base T, but then it also has eight ports of SFP plus uplinks, as well as the four 40 slash 100 gig uplinks. Um, the base T ports, like the 24 port model, are all uh, smart rate. Uh, and of course this one supports 880 gigabits of line rate bandwidth and uh, 1309 million packets per second. Again, fully redundant uh, power supplies and fan trays for front to back or back to front airflow options. So just, you know, when we're looking at what's needed to power up the 8100, really the only thing that's really needed is one power supply, of course, and one fan tray. And the power supply is going to determine the system air, airflow. So the power supply and power supply slot one, if that one is a front to back or a back to front power supply, then that's going to, that's going to be what determines the airflow. So it's not configurable at the CLI. And then taking a look at um, the breakout cables. So we've done a lot of uh, testing and validation with regards to you know our own optics here on the Aruba business unit, but also with regards to the uh, greater HPE and the server storage type solutions that they offer. So we support uh, you know a wide range of breakout cables, uh, both Aruba SKUs as well as HPE SKUs. Uh, giving our customers that confidence and flexibility that when they deploy these with uh, the uh, HPE servers that they can actually you know work properly. Uh, another thing to note is these breakout cables are actually uh, only supported on the 24 port models. So the 24 port models have the 40 slash 100 gig uplinks and again these are only going to be supported on the 24 port models. The breakout cables are not supported on the 48 port model. And then just furthering that story about the Better Together story with us and the Greater HPE, we've done a lot of interop testing with regards to the uh, server NICs that are uh, found commonly in the uh, HPE server solutions. And so we can see here a, a listing of the 10 gig base T adapters that have been fully tested and validated as well as the SFP Plus adapters, uh, even all the way down to the bottom with the ones with the Pensando uh, cards in them. Now take note, um, there is um, a few excluded features on this switch. So uh, this switch doesn't have MACSEC, um, it doesn't support MPLS, uh, and it doesn't support PTP. Um, really, you know, it's this is a data center switch, and so of course it doesn't support PoE either. So I hope you got a lot out of that. That was a quick introduction to the CX8100, uh, and have a great day.